In a quiet meadow nestled between two hills, there lived a clever crow named Ello and a curious mouse named Millie. Ello and Millie were the best of friends, and they spent their days exploring the meadow and getting into all sorts of mischief. One sunny day, as they were wandering through the meadow, they came across a farmer's field filled with ripe corn. The sight of the golden corn was too tempting for Ello and Millie to resist. Ello had an idea. Millie, let's work together to get some corn, Ello said, his eyes gleaming with mischief. Millie, intrigued by Ello's plan, asked, How are we going to do that? Ello explained his plan to Millie. He would fly down to the field and distract the farmer while Millie would sneak in and gather some corn. Millie thought it was a brilliant plan and agreed to help. That evening, as the sun was setting, Ello flew down to the field and began cawing loudly, drawing the farmer's attention away from the cornfield. While the farmer was busy chasing Ello away, Millie scurried into the field and began gathering corn. Just as Millie was about to leave, the farmer spotted her and started to give chase. Millie ran as fast as she could, with the farmer hot on her heels. Ello, seeing Millie in trouble, swooped down and grabbed her, lifting her to safety. Together, Ello and Millie flew back to their meadow, where they feasted on the stolen corn, laughing and recounting their adventure. From then on, Ello and Millie were known as the mischievous duo who could outsmart anyone. The moral of the story is that teamwork and cleverness can help you overcome any obstacle, no matter how big or small. In a tranquil pond nestled among lush greenery lived two fish named Yu and Mo. Yu was adventurous and always eager to explore new parts of the pond, while Mo was more cautious, preferring to stay close to their underwater home. One day, as Yu was swimming near the surface, he spotted a frog named Froggy sitting on a lily pad. Intrigued by the frog, Yu swam closer and struck up a conversation. Hello, Froggy. What are you doing here? Yu asked. I'm just enjoying the sun and watching the world go by, Froggy replied with a croak. Yu, always curious, asked Froggy if he had ever explored the pond. Froggy admitted that he hadn't, as he was afraid of the deep waters. I can show you around if you'd like, Yu offered. Mo and I know this pond like the back of our fins. Froggy hesitated at first, but the idea of exploring the pond with the fish intrigued him. He agreed to join Yu and Mo on their adventure. The three of them set off, with Yu leading the way and Mo following closely behind. They swam through underwater caves, glided past swaying water plants, and marveled at the colorful fish that darted around them. As they explored, Froggy's fear of the deep waters began to fade, replaced by a sense of wonder and excitement. He realized that there was so much more to the pond than he had ever imagined. After a day of exploration, the trio returned to their starting point, tired but happy. Froggy thanked Yu and Mo for showing him around and vowed to explore more of the pond on his own. From then on, Yu, Mo, and Froggy became the best of friends, exploring every corner of the pond together and sharing many more adventures. The moral of the story is that friendship knows no boundaries and that stepping out of your comfort zone can lead to exciting new discoveries. In a small town nestled at the foot of a majestic mountain, there lived a barber named Edward. Edward was known far and wide for his skill with scissors and razor, but he was also known for his foolishness. Despite his talent for cutting hair, Edward often made silly mistakes that left his customers scratching their heads. One day, a wealthy merchant named Sam came to Edward's shop for a shave. As Edward lathered Sam's face with shaving cream, he noticed a scar on Sam's cheek. Ah, I see you have a scar here, sir, Edward said, pointing to the scar. Yes. I got it when I was a child, Sam replied. Edward, eager to impress Sam with his wit, said, You know, sir, I have a special ointment that can make that scar disappear completely. Would you like me to apply it for you? Sam, intrigued by Edward's offer, agreed. Edward reached for a jar of ointment and began applying it to Sam's scar. However, instead of disappearing, the scar began to burn and itch, causing Sam great discomfort. Ouch! What is in this ointment? Sam exclaimed, clutching his cheek in pain. Edward, realizing his mistake, panicked and confessed that he had made a foolish error. Sam, though unhappy with the outcome, forgave Edward and left the shop, his scar still visible on his cheek. From that day on, 
Edward became known as the foolish barber who tried to make scars disappear with a magical ointment. Despite his mistake, Edward continued to cut hair in the town, but he was always more careful with his words and actions. The moral of the story is that it is better to admit your mistakes than to try to cover them up with falsehoods. Edward learned the hard way that honesty and humility are more important than trying to impress others with empty promises. In a far-off kingdom, there ruled a king who was known for his foolishness. The king's decisions often led to chaos and confusion in the kingdom, much to the dismay of his subjects. One day, a clever monkey named Kapi came to the kingdom. Kapi was known throughout the land for his intelligence and quick thinking. One day, as Kapi was swinging through the trees near the palace, he overheard the king and his advisors discussing a problem. The kingdom's granary was running low on food, and the king didn't know what to do. Seeing an opportunity to help, Kapi approached the king and offered his assistance. Your Majesty, I am Kapi, the clever monkey. I can help you solve the problem of the empty granary, Kapi said confidently. The king, intrigued by Kapi's offer, decided to give him a chance. Kapi explained his plan to the king. He would go into the forest and gather all the ripe fruits and nuts he could find. He would then bring them back to the kingdom and fill the granary with food. The king, impressed by Kapi's plan, agreed to let him try. Kapi set off into the forest and began gathering fruits and nuts. He worked tirelessly, gathering as much food as he could carry. When Kapi returned to the kingdom, he found the granary locked. The king had forgotten to give him the key. Undeterred, Kapi climbed up to the roof of the granary and began dropping the fruits and nuts down the chimney. The king, seeing the food raining down from the sky, was amazed. He realized that Kapi had found a clever solution to the problem. He opened the granary and allowed Kapi to fill it with food. From that day on, the king learned to listen to the advice of others and not to underestimate the intelligence of those around him. Kapi became the king's most trusted advisor, and together they ruled the kingdom wisely and justly. The moral of the story is that wisdom can come from unexpected places, and it is important to listen to the advice of others, no matter who they are. In a quaint village nestled among rolling hills, there lived a little girl named Susie. Susie was known for her kind heart and adventurous spirit. One day, as she was playing near a river, she spotted something glinting in the water. Curious, Susie waded into the river and discovered a small basket floating gently downstream. Inside the basket, Susie found three small golden eggs. She had never seen anything like them before and wondered where they had come from. Susie decided to take the eggs home and show them to her parents. When Susie showed the eggs to her parents, they were amazed. They had never seen anything like them either. Susie's parents suggested that they take the eggs to the village elder to see if he knew anything about them. The village elder examined the eggs carefully and explained to Susie and her parents that the eggs were magical. He told them that if they cared for the eggs with love and kindness, they would bring them great fortune. Excited by the prospect of good fortune, Susie and her parents decided to keep the eggs. They placed them in a warm, cozy nest and waited to see what would happen. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months. One day, as Susie was tending to the eggs, she heard a soft tapping sound. She looked down and saw that one of the eggs was cracking open. With bated breath, Susie watched as a tiny golden bird emerged from the egg. The bird chirped happily and flew around the room, filling it with light and joy. The other two eggs soon hatched as well, revealing two more golden birds. Susie named them Sunny, Sparkle, and Shimmer, and they became her faithful companions. With the help of Sunny, Sparkle, and Shimmer, Susie and her family's fortune began to change. Their crops grew abundantly, and their animals thrived. The village prospered, and Susie became known as the girl with the golden touch. Susie learned that sometimes, the most precious things in life come in the smallest packages, and that kindness and love can bring great rewards. The moral of the story is that kindness and love can bring great rewards, and that even the smallest of gifts can have a big impact.